Hello and uh, welcome to another video. I have um, been discussing DNS and HTTP um, a bit the other day and uh, it turns out that this DNS HTTP combination is actually fairly difficult for people to grasp on how they work together so I decided to make a quick video about it. So the basic use case that we're trying to address today is uh, the um, you have some sort of uh, ordinary user and in his browser, he he either writes HTTP slash slash UCL dot DK or HTTPS UCL dot DK and HTTP www dot dot UCL dot DK or HTTPS www.ucl.dk So, as the site owner, the one that administrates the site, you actually want all of this, all of these, to end up in this guy. There are some technical reasons why we actually prefer the uh, www, but basically, whenever you have a site, you want all of these to end up in the encrypted version with this specific name. Um, this is related to the internal naming when you run your uh, web apps and so on. It is just better that they have the same name every time instead of something um, different. Okay. Um, uh, this um, what what you sometimes see is that uh, these, um, what's it called, that these sites, they, they point to somewhere else, some, let's call it third party. So that might be some sort of shop, it might be um, some hosting or something else. Um, so. You may have this site, but you are actually running some large web app of Microsoft or uh, simply or wherever you feel like having your, um, your 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 data. Okay, so the um, the basic process when you type this in the browser. Let's do that one. So we still have our you. This is the user and he has a browser and in his browser he types http slash slash ucl dot dk um, and what the browser does is that it needs to figure out the IP address of the um, server to use the web server so we address web servers on the internet using IP addresses, so we kind of need to translate this into one of those addresses. It's called an A record to get the IP version 4 address from a DNS server. So the DNS server is something that holds a lot of domain names and IP addresses. Right? And we do a lookup, and we can actually do that. Let's do this over here. We can make this just a tad bigger. Right. So, when I do dig ucl.dk, you see that um, the IP address of ucl.dk is this. So we can just move this a tad so we can still see it. Yes. Okay, so this guy will return with the information that it is, uh, the IP address is 217.114.85.70. Um, and then the browser now knows the IP address and it will ship an HTTP request to the web server. And this web server, uh, we will actually Let's be consistent here. This is the web server. And when you do the HTTP request, you will actually ask for a host, ucl.dk host. And this is important because this web server might hold a million websites. A million is a lot. Let's say a thousand. 
So we can actually ask which web server this is. Um, 217.114.14.85.70 So, you see that uh, this um, is actually owned by something called uh, epserverhotel.net and it doesn't actually give us a name for this one it's basically just the, uh, a simple web forward they're doing so, Let's uh, see what happens on the web server when we actually request this. We use a command called curl for that. Uh, colon ucl.dk. We do need to do a dash v here. So we are requesting the host called ucl.dk and we are requesting it from this server on the HTTP port, and then we get this 301 move permanently. Uh, and then we get a reply. We 301 redirect. Um, and it redirects to HTTP slash slash www.ucl.dk. Okay, so now the browser knows that we are in the uh, case of uh, that if we want to continue we will be using www.uclbk um, the if this had been something else than a root domain we could have um, told this guy the DNS server to actually give us the IP address of www.uclk instead but there's this in the RFC 1034 there's an interesting rule saying that um, you cannot see what we want to do what want to do a scene in from ucl.dk to www.ucl.dk this is an arrow so this is actually, this could be nice to do, uh, and we do this a lot with everything else except the top level domains. If this had been shop or app or mail or FTP or whatever, you could just mirror it like this using a C name. But since this is a top level domain, you are simply not allowed to do this. Unless this is a completely bare uh, domain, which it is not in most cases because you're actually having mail and such installed okay so root domain implies not allowed so the solution is to implement what uh, they've implemented here so this is something we could call a um, web forward they call it that from time to time but this is basically a server with a file called um, .htaccess htaccess oh you cannot see what I'm doing here let's uh, add another page so we can uh, scroll here so you basically have an htaccess file um, and it can do this thing called uh, rule rewrite this is in the documentation for all of these so it's basically a super simple web server that whenever it gets stuff to UCLDK it just replies and says hey this has been redirected to www.uclDK so um, now um, now let's assume that so, so now the web server actually knows that instead of being at uh, this we should go to this so let's continue doing that so we do exactly as before we have this guy he has his browser and we are typing http www.ucl.dk and he will again ask for an A record from the DNS server uh, so 
let's uh, ask the DNS server and see uh, what www gives us. And this is actually um, a much more interesting reply. It says that uh, UCLDK is actually pointing towards this thing on EP server, which might relate to the EP host thing we saw before. And then it points to uh, Cloudflare and it points to the address. So what we actually have is some, let's uh, try to uh, draw it a bit better here. So, in the DNS server, it knows that www.ucl.dk, we want that to point to uh, something.epserver.net, and that in turn points to something Cloudflare, and that in turn points to the actual IP address 104.17.153.7 or 154.7 and this is all nice and it means that uh, since we are having a non-lazy um, uh, what's it called a non-lazy uh, DNS server we are actually being told all this just by asking for the record which is actually quite cool um, and this guy will then return all of this, but for our purposes, the important part is the 104.17.153.7. The um, this is an interesting thing also because it means that um, both the uh, the IP 153 address and the 154 address they are both valid for this domain, which means that if one of the IP addresses die, then it's still okay. You can access the other one. The web server is lazy, accessing the first one, but if we actually run it again, you will see that um, 153 is now the last one and 154 is now the first one. So they kind of change, uh, and that is a way of doing load balancing because browsers will pick the first one. That's actually super cool. Okay, so now we know the IP address of the web server, and it's a Cloudflare web server. They probably host a lot of uh, sites. And we are asking for a host called this thing up here, ucl.tk. And let's, um, and this is an HTTP request. HTTP request. Let's see what happens when we do that. <coughs> so, um, we do the curl command and we do the www. And a lot of things happen, and we see that we get the um, 301 move permanently. We get that one again. Redirect. And we are redirecting to, it's written here somewhere, HTTPS. HTTPS www.ucl.dk. So now the browser knows that. Whenever we go to, uh, uh, no, when we go to this, we're having this IP address, and then when we access using HTTP, then um, we're actually being told to go somewhere else. It so happens that we actually know the IP address of www.ucl.dk because we already looked it up. So we are now shipping an HTTPS request to the web server, web server, Cloudflare, and so on, and still requesting the host www.uclTK. And the interesting part here is that right here, we actually get that the browser will update um, what you see in the location bar. So we start with having some HTTP thing, we do the DNS lookup to get the right IP address, and then we talk to the web server, specify the host, and so on. 
And let's just go over here and check what happens when we HTTP access this site. We're getting a lot of stuff. We're getting the actual uh, HTML this time. Um, and this is the, we, we call it the um, 200 OK. That would be the return code and we get some HTML back. This over here on this is HTML. So, we, we have um, some interesting uh, details here. The, um, the browser will do a DNS lookup for you. It will get an IP address back and then we'll make the HTTP request and you'll get redirected. It will update the URL you see and then we'll ship it back. Um, this is um, how it works for uh, most um, sites. And it's super important to underline that DNS don't know anything about HTTP. It knows something about IP addresses, not uh, HTTP and, uh, or HTTPS. So if you want to do this trick where you change HTTP to HTTPS, you cannot do it in the DNS server. So let's uh, conclude on this. Um, yes. So. The basic use case we wanted was to have some HTTP, HTTPS, www.ucl.dk, ucl.dk. We want, whenever we are doing HTTP, we want to ship it over here. Whenever we have UCL, we want to ship it over here. Whenever we have HTTP, UCL, we want to ship it over here. So. We basically always want to end up in this scenario where it's called HTTPS slash slash www.ucl.dk. Um, and as we saw, when we use HTTP to UCL, it will jump up here and then it will go over here, which is fine. You could actually set it up so that it uh, hops directly this way if you wanted to. So the how to do this is that when you have set up your, um, um, when you have set up the DNS so that it points to the correct server, you need to set up your HT access file on the server running, um, uh, on the server running both uh, UCL and WW UCL. You need to have uh, HT access files on both of them with a rewrite rule. All this is in the documentation for whatever site you're working on, or you can Google this. All the alternative is to use the web forward um, concept or web redirect, which is something that I've seen the uh, one.com and uh, Unoro actually do. Um, Unoro was unable to do a web forward from HTTP to HTTPS. No, sorry, from HTTPS to HTTPS. But that it's probably a certificate thing. But the, the, the point is that they actually create this very small web server that is capable of doing this jump, or that one for that matter, so that it has a minimal web server that only does this simple rewrite thing, you can have a lot of rewrites without a much uh, processing power. So either you make your rewrite rule yourself so that whenever you get to it with the wrong name, you actually tell it to, no, no, you need to redirect to somewhere else. So perhaps we could add a uh, 301, 301 redirect, or use, use what uh, your bride has already. Um, for our use case that we discussed the other day, we actually needed uh, a combination of these. Yes, that was uh, my DNS uh, and HTTP. Um, hope it was useful for you. And um, I will um, yeah leave comments below if you want to uh, get anything um, more detailed or if you want links and such. Thank you.